Hello class and welcome to our last lecture series on Management Essential and I am your instructor Dr. Jamal. So our next class is going to be a little bit revision and all the stuff but we will be also discussing paper pattern today as well. So as we discussed earlier so we talked about okay we will be applying all the management functions or we want to learn how we are going to apply the management function in organizations we started shedding light on planning and then organizing and then leading and then today our topic is on controlling all right so To begin with, we have a new chapter, chapter 18, and that is all about the last function of the management, controlling. Okay, so the learning objective for this chapter is that we'll talk about the importance and meaning of controlling, the controlling process, how organizational and employee performance are measured. And then, what are the various tools used to measure the performance? And in the last, we'll talk about the modern issues or contemporary issues in controlling. So, to begin with, what is controlling? So, controlling basically it's the process of monitoring, comparing, and correcting work performances. So all manager should control even if their units are performing as planned because they can't really know that unless they are evaluated what activity has been done and compared with the actual one. Right? So it's not about okay you are in planning position so you should not exercise the control no at every level you want to exercise the control why because you want to know that whether you are on the track or not if you are deviated from the track so that you can take corrective actions to go back on track all right so effective controls ensure that activities are completed in a way that leads to attainment of organizational goals all right now the thing is the famous question that's still popping in your mind that why controlling is important right so the thing is controlling is important in every stage even in planning we just talked about that even in employing em empowering employees and then protecting the works wor uh, workplace so we all we just talk about that control is important so how it is important in planning all right because many managers are reluctant to empower their employees in this case because managers are responsible they are also answerable for the achievement of the goals not the employees so they don't want, they don't want to share the control with the employees or they don't want to give the task or autonomy to the employees that okay you can do this work whatever the way you want how much time you need whatever the time you need just do that no because if they are not able to complete on you know on a specific task on a specific date or deadline then not employees are responsible it's the manager it, it, it is the manager responsibility so they are reluctant to share the control so if you see in an, in an organization that employee empower, empowerment is a little bit low 
then that doesn't mean that this organization is not doing well or this management is bad or something the other meaning is that maybe over their control process is very effective they don't want to miss the deadlines at all that's it so normally in software houses techno tech industries or some construction project projects they want to exercise you know control why and they don't give autonomy to the employees you know too much autonomy to the employees why because in order to fulfill the planning they must be on track all right so when they must be on track it means they need to ensure that either whether they are deviating from the goals or whether they are on the track or what corrective actions you know they should take to get back or to move forward all right okay so in planning control is also necessary because there is no assurance that activities are going as planned and the goals employees and managers are working on they are being attained or not right in planning what you do you lay out but whether you are following or not or not that is ensured through control process all right the last thing is protecting uh, pr protecting the workplace so in today's environment where everything is threatened with the natural disasters you know financial scandals workplace violence sexual harassment videos going viral you know possible terrorist attacks negativity spreading neg uh, negativity from your competitors so managers are now much more sensitive to all these issues and they don't want to be the victim or they don't want to be the answerable or they don't want to uh, be held responsible for these kind of activities whether it's pr protecting the assets of the company whether it is the reputation whether it's the loss excessive loss from natural disaster okay because they cannot predict the uh, earthquakes or storms or something but still they can have some kind of proactive actions so that their loss going to be minimum all right similarly threat to security or terrorism they must place some kind of metal you know detectors this kind of stuff so, so that somebody is not getting guns or this and then theft and nowadays uh, you know the violence right so that's why managers for managers it is important to exercise the control all right so the planning controlling links so all the management functions they are interlinked you are planning what do we plan goals objectives strategies plans and then we organize how to achieve those motivating employees so that they are on track controlling so that you can see that whether you are following the standards your achievement of the goals is measurable all right comparable if not what corrective actions should we take so the, what i just discussed this called 
the control process. So what is the control process? It's a three-step process. Step one, measuring the actual performance. Second, comparing the actual one with standard or your benchmark. And third, taking action whether we are on track or not, or if we are not, then what corrective action should we take? So if we make a flow chart, it looks like that. Measuring actual performance, when actual performance answers are, you know, they came, compare it with your standard or your, your benchmark on all levels, divisional level, department level, organizational level and individual level see on all levels one two three four on all levels so that on every you know uh, level you have you you can have control or you exercise control all right and at the end take corrective actions so let's just shed some light what do we mean by measuring performance because there are some issues in that what can be the possible issues in measuring, what can be the possible issues? Number one and number two. The measurement issue is going to be how we measure and what we measure. Number one issue is, is how we measure. So, in step one, the problem is how we measure. So, there are five approaches that managers apply to measure the actual performance. So these are personal observations. Personal observation. These are your personal observations. If the, uh, you know, performance is going on on sub, sub, subjective, you know, uh, nature or qualitative nature, then you can just observe personally, okay, at this time, this much work, should be done no mathematical calculation or statistical analysis is needed and then we have the statistical approach if there is a production company or a marketing company or, or you can say the uh, um, oil drilling company this kind of stuff where where they have uh, where they are producing goods and services so they can use Statistical analysis, okay, like construction company, 70% work done. What do we, we mean by 70%? It's a gray work, gray structures with, you know, the wall boundaries and all those stuff. And then self-monitoring computers, you apply computing machines, some computer technologies to find out, like bird analysis, or timelines, you can follow with that. And then oral reports, you can ask your employees to come and talk to you okay how much work they have done and then you gather divisional like this there is a hierarchy here's the top level manager middle level managers and low level managers and there are employees under them so employees tell them okay what's going on so at that division so every division manager tell to the middle level managers and all of the division uh, all, all, all of the companies, middle level managers report to the top level managers, okay, this kind of work has been done. And the last is written reports. 